Welcome to Astoria, Oregon. I'm really excited that you came out to film this show because this, this fishery here at the mouth of the Columbia River, this, this sturgeon fishery is, is a fantastic one. And of course, it's a big consumptive fishery early in the season, but then when it goes to catch and release, everybody disappears. And it's so much fun down here just because it's shallow water fishing with light gear. It's fairly easy fishing. You just kind of got to follow the fish and stay on them as the tides move and, and I just really enjoy it. Hey, when Buzz Ramsey calls and invites you to go fishing, you go. And this trip was one of these things that we talked about for months, and it was everything I'd hoped it would be. Buzz is an icon of the Northwest, and uh, truly one of the most knowledgeable fishermen I've been in a boat with. This is uh, Steve Panaz. Hi, Eric. Steve. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah. I'm looking forward to this. And it's interesting when you fish with a guide for the first time, you walk in their boat, and instantly, within the first three or four minutes, you're going to know if you're going to have a good trip. His boat was well organized, he was very knowledgeable, his tackle was all set up, Eric's on the top of his game. It's really exciting to me to get this opportunity to come out and do this. You know what, these are magnificent fish and I just want to give people the opportunity to catch them and, and, and enjoy the fishery. There's over a million sturgeon in the lower Columbia River, west of Bonneville Dam. And the biggest bulk of them are here at the mouth of the river. Sturgeon fishing is a pretty simple method. I mean, you, you go out, you, you throw the anchor out, you cast out with baits, and the fish tell you right away if they're there. My first Columbia River sturgeon on right now. How much drag you got? You're all right. You're good. I tightened it. <laughs> <laughs> Cardinal sin, well, but I tightened no, it. We're in a lot of current here. That's not a bad deal. Ugh. Look at the power on that thing. Wow. All right, okay. just like tuna fishing. All right. But with this current flow, I mean, you do have a lot of current to try and move these things. A lot of pull. Oh, there he is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you, can, you can see how strong that current is. That barbless hook's right in his mouth. What size hook are you running? That's a fry box. There we got it. Go to your way with it. Wow, he's bigger than I thought he was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's got a real sensitive nose for, for sniffing out bait, feeling them with these tentacles. And they got a big scooper mouth. Yeah, they, that mouth really yeah, drops down yeah. a lot further so than they, people realize. They're, they're a feeder, you know, they're looking for bait on the bottom. They got these real sharp scut scoots? Scutes. 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 Oh, that is sharp. On the, uh, yeah, they'll cut you. I mean, if you me you get you. a small one and you pick him up and he flaps, he'll he'll cut your hand. You grab oh, way right? back at the tail right here. Okay. You grab him right back here and, and he won't hurt you. Right 50 on. inches, huh? Yeah. That's a dandy. Is that? That's a dandy. What a cool fish. I'm going to dump this guy back in. Yeah. There he goes. <laughs> <laughs> that Yay! Was that was cool, huh? <laughs> good, was, good going. That was I fun. love it. This is a catch and release fishery, so it's totally barbless hook by regulation. Yeah, that's barbless. And uh, and so this is a little anchovy caught right here in the river, and uh, you just bring it through like so, like that, and then you half hitch it up the and run another half hitch. And uh, so how many half hitches do you put in well, there? Yeah, three or four. They'll just pull free. Now we're going to spray it with a little shrimp spray here. Give a little extra scent to the package here. And the sinker holds because the current's running. And then, of course, it's rig free sliding, so the sturgeon can pick up the bait and not feel take that. It and not feel any resistance. Throw it out, let her sit. Got him! Got him! Got him! All right! Yay. Ooh, do I need to clear rods? Oh yeah, I think you better. <laughs> All right, get this out of your way. <laughs> Boy, that didn't take long. Oh yeah. Is that big fish? Oh yeah, he's taking line. Look at that Whoa, wide field look out at there. That. <laughs> that baby. <laughs> Woo, uh, look at that. Yeah, we'll see. Not quite that that fish. Sure. <laughs> it's a lot more fun watching you fight him. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. We got him here. That's not bad fish. You get him? There you go. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Look how fresh the scutes are on this thing. There's, it's no wear on the fish. When they're in the river a long time, it wears all these all these scutes off here. So that was fun. That was fun. That first yeah. run was impressive. Yeah, he really took off. We'll let him go. We'll get the rods back out. Steve Panaz and Berkeley's Buzz Ramsey, fishing with guide Eric Lindy, have found a great sturgeon bite. These prehistoric giants are on the upswing thanks to improved management efforts. They're coming back and we've taken care of these fish and now we're reaping the benefits of enjoying some great fisheries for white sturgeon, for lake sturgeon and others, and I'm really excited about that. I really believe that the future is really bright for sturgeon. The agencies are doing a great job managing this fishery to maintain good fishing. And, uh, and we certainly experienced it on our trip. It's midsummer, and the fish are up shallow on the Columbia River near Astoria, Oregon. Uh, yeah, we got him. Oh, yeah, he's on there. <laughs> That's pretty good one. <laughs> there he is. Oh, that... awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Slip and drag, baby. <laughs> oh, it's always easier or not on the rod. Pull, pull, pull. Let me hit this. <laughs> Wow, another fat one. <laughs> you know, Buzz, it's funny that a lot of deer hunters talk about ground shrinkage, how fish get to you know, deer get smaller when they get closer to them. Right. These things get bigger when they get in the boat. They don't look that big in the water. Now, is this an average fish here? Uh-huh. Yeah. Four right. foot. What a cool fish. There's a lot of history here with the with the Columbia River, especially since we're celebrating the 200 years since Lewis and Clark first came here. Well, this right here, believe it or not, is the is the last place, the most westerly place, when Lewis and Clark made their voyage west, and, and the end of their voyage was right here where they camped. And uh, they actually spent about 10 days here, and then they crossed the river and they wintered on the other side of Fort Clatsop. His drawings are amazingly accurate, isn't it? I mean, I, I don't 1805. Know how, or... I don't know how they could do it, but they did. With the skies clearing, the guys head back to tangle with more sturgeon. Got him? There he is. Yeah. Whoa! Got there's a there. good one. I'll clear this other rod. If I need to clear this other rod, let me know. Going towards the boat, coming right in there behind. Okay, I'm gonna clear it. Wow. It feels like pretty good. I got one on here. You got yeah. a double on, baby. Oh, yay. It was, come over here. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Is that yours or mine? Oh, it's mine. Okay, I'm gonna come back under you, Buzz. Okay, that's fine. Good, good. Uh, there you go. I just picked that rod up to clear it. It was on there. He saw you coming. <laughs> you <must have. laughs> Woo! A double. Here's mine right here. Let's get him unhooked. It. Got him? Buzz has got the monster on I got, I got jaws. <laughs> 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 How's that Toro performing for you? Good, good. Boy, the drag is glass smooth. If you look at a reel that small, you don't think that could have the, like the power and the gears to hold up to a fish this big, but it does. Oh, nice fish. Yeah. That's a giant. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, Certainly, I'm known for, you know, as a salmon steelhead trout angler, and I've kind of vowed here recently, I'm going to do more sturgeon fishing. Got him. Oh, there he is. There we go. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, baby. It's got some decent head shakes. Fish on, fish on. Fish on. I really believe that the future is really bright for sturgeon. We've got excellent management. They're watching these fish, studying these fish, watching the growth rates and everything, monitoring the harvest, keeping it in track. And I think the future is really bright for this fishery. It's a fishery that people can not only count on this year, but, but five or 10 years from now. We got one going on this outer rod. Boy, we might get chaos here again. He's heading. He's, coming our way. He's, he's heading west. <laughs> <laughs> I would encourage our our viewers that live across the country that if they ever visit the Northwest, follow that Lewis and Clark Trail. Uh, enjoy the salmon fishery or the sturgeon fishery here, and take advantage of the area when you do visit because it's going to be here to stay. I have to admit, this is a, uh, the fishery itself is a blast. It's, uh, it's fun to be out in a beautiful part of the country and have fish that pull like this. This is. Yeah, you can, uh, you can wear your shoulders out fighting these babies. How do you measure the success <laughs> of a day? I look at three things. I look at the fishing, the friends, and possibly the weather. And today, it couldn't have been any better. I had a chance to meet with Eric Lindy, a guide who's really on the top of his game. A chance to fish with a legend and buzz and we enjoyed great fishing and great weather. Today is one of those days that goes in the journal as a day to remember for the rest of my life. Today was great. I mean, we caught fish, we had great weather, we had doubles. I mean, a terrific fishery and, and one that uh, I know I'm gonna be visiting again and I hope you are too.